Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're back into our Let's Play tutorial of Distant Worlds 2, the new game that's coming out March 10th, 2022. We got an advanced copy, we're playing a Let's Play tutorial to learn all the mechanics and systems of this game, and I couldn't be more excited about it. This is episode number two. We've already set up our galaxy, and you can see I've got the big high view over the galaxy that we're going to take over, and you can see right down here is where our home moon is. We actually have a moon as our home base, and uh, this is the big galaxy view over the top. Let's talk about everything that you see here on this screen very quickly. Now we're going to hit all of them as we go along and play and talk about them more in depth. But I just want to at the start say, you know, so you're kind of acclimated to what's going on, what each of these things uh, is. Uh, the first thing I'll point out is you may say my game doesn't look like this. Well, that's because I've changed the default. What do I mean by that? Well, if we come over here to the game menu, and we go down to settings and display, I have changed the user interface to small. So when you start up your game, it's gonna be on standard. I changed it to small. Why did I do that? Because I'm trying to keep most things default, right? Is because I just like to see what's going on, you know, with all of my units and whatnot, uh, kind of in a bigger sense and all of the informational stuff a little bit smaller. So I have changed that to small if it looks different from your game. Okay, up here, starting in the upper left, we've got the Axe Supremacy. That is our faction. That is who we're playing. It's our empire, okay? Next to that is Diplomacy. So we can find out a bunch, bunch of information here about our empire. Diplomacy, we won't have any of that going on at the start, but eventually we'll have a lot of that going on, and we'll talk about it characters now this game has a huge role-playing aspect to it and we'll get into characters colonies right now we have one colony right it's our home moon uh, but of course we hope to have more let's hope we have more than one exploration so this is scouting and now we get into the major functions of what you'll be doing as the leader of your empire you'll be exploring You'll be mining, which shows up under resources. You'll be building, which shows up under ship construction. You'll be researching, which shows up under research. And we will also have a military, and that's the military button. Finally, civilian. This is the uh, item of the game that you don't really control as much. Uh, of course, you'll be building some of their ships and they'll pay you for that. But that part of that of the economy will be going on sort of independent of you. And so it's the last button here. If we go over to the left, or I'm sorry, over to the right, this is what we're currently researching. And so you start off just automatically with early warp field experiments. That Don't change it, uh, the skip drive, because that is the most important research you'll conduct in the entire game. It allows you to go from just being in your own little solar system to traveling out in the stars. So we're going to start with early warp field. We'll be talking in depth about research, which is all so important in this game. We are the Axe Supremacy. You can see our flag here. Our peoples are the uh, half-fish-like creatures, the Actarians. There are 2 billion of them now, or 2,000 million of them, and we have one colony. We have 24,558 credits. Right now, our cash flow is 1339, all right? So we're negative. We're going to have to maybe raise a tax rate, or just as we start building civilian ships, it's possible that'll go positive. We'll talk about the economy, which is a another very big part of this game. Uh, next, you see the date here. It is January 5th, 2754. That is just the date they picked to start, and we are paused. This is a pausable, real-time game. You can slow it down. You can speed it up. We are going to be playing on the slowest possible speed. I, I like to play that way when I just play myself because... 
you know, you're already going to start to get a little overwhelmed when you first start playing this game. But even later on, when you've played the game a lot, even then, there's a lot that, that is happening, a lot of pop-ups, you need to go check things. And I like to play this game on manual control as much as I possibly can. Uh, so I like to manually control things out of the map. That means you need to play it slowly. Now you can always pause it here or hit the space bar to pause it. If you start to feel like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I got to, you know, figure out what's happening here. I like to do that as little as possible because I think it adds a little bit of realism to your decision tree. So we'll see. I mean, you know, I'm going to be explaining things here instead of just playing the game. So we'll probably pause a little more than uh, I usually do. But you can slow it down, speed it up and when it's on the fastest level it'll really cook along okay victory conditions we can keep you know pop these up and as we start to see other um, empires you know it'll co be comparing us and you can see the economy population territory and the specialized Akdarian race victory conditions and you can see how much uh, of these, you know, you've accomplished or not accomplished, the different goals that you may have. Uh, you can see for the Akdarians, uh, the things that are specific to them, 25% perform the most research, 25% own the largest capital ship, 25% control the largest ocean colony, and 25% have the most research treaties in the galaxy. So those will be things. Now we need to get three or four of those to reach the Akdarian victory uh, conditions. And then over you know, to the left, you see territory and population and economy. Those, look, those are the kind of things you play the game the best you can and they will happen eventually. It's not really the kind of stuff you could just go as a goal, right? I mean, your economy, you want it to be really good. Uh, that's that's the big secret here, okay? So those are victory conditions. The game menu we talked about, Galactopedia. This game has an incredible, incredible uh, resource here where you can go read about anything and everything in this game. And so, you know, ancient ruins, characters, colonization, I mean, you name it, it's out here. The most important ones, I would say, certainly once you understand the game is resources so you can go here and see what each of the re and you can look at all of the number of resources in this game but you can go out here and look and say what the hell is Nataran incense you know I mean what does that do for me what kind of uh, luxury good is that is it a luxury I don't know I mean yeah probably uh, and what kind of bonuses do I get from that etc so it can help you decide if you actually want to pursue a planet or a moon or something that has these things on it. Norjack eggs. I've heard they're good. I don't know if that's true. Uh, space creatures, alien races, government type. I mean, you can read the other second or the second most important one, I would say is components and so in this game you can build your own ships every ship type has a hull so there are every every civilization is going to have a scout ship of some sort everyone is going to have a mining ship of some sort right uh, and they have a basic hull that basic hull then you can load components on and customize your ships you can make your ship go faster you can make your ship have more defense uh, or a million other things right different uh, missile systems Aegis uh, missile battery uh, basic fuel cells cargo bays citadel shields I mean there's a uh, planet destroying uh, weapons things like that and so components is very important to come down just take a look what the heck is this what does it do uh, when you start thinking about building ships now I'm not going to start off when we just get going here building our own ships as far as designing them of course we'll be building them we got to build a lot of ships but we're going to go with the generic design at first part of that is because you just do not have enough components researched to uh, make it very interesting building your own ships they're all going to kind of be the same at the start which makes sense but as you start to uh, research different kinds of shields or torpedo weapons or laser weapons whatnot you can get a really nice variety of different kinds of ships and we'll certainly talk more about that 
as we get going. So Galactopedia, incredibly important right up here. Message log, this tells you, well, get off Galactopedia, there we go. Message log tells you everything that pops up over here as a message. And you can see here, new leader appears, a new leader named Voss Serafu has appeared at Trawaz. So he is the leader of our people. We'll go look at him. He's the first character that spawned. And we'll check him out, see what kind of bonuses he gives us, what he's good at. Uh, we read a little bit about that last time, but we'll really go look at that in depth. Down in the bottom left, this is whatever you have selected on the map. All right. So let's just say we wanted to go down to the Wild Courage. Uh, the Wild Courage is a mining vessel that just so happens to be what I popped on there. Um, we could go down to the Askelon system here. That is our home system. So if we scoot out, you see there it is. We can zoom in on that. Um, we also have a way to do that over here to just go straight into your region. Okay, so there's the region view around Ascalon, uh, the system view. So here's the Ascalon system um, location. Okay, Ascalon 3 and the moons. It zooms us in really closely there. You also get a badge here that gives you information about the system itself, Ascalon. We'll talk more about that. Right now, I just want to show you on the bottom left, if we click here, that's Ascalon. It'll pop up over here, whatever we're clicked on, whatever this is, unknown ship, unknown ship from an unknown empire. Uh, our home uh, moon is over here. If we click on that, it will pop up here, Trawaz, right? And so right here is anything and everything that you click on in the game. Also, you have this, which is very helpful, uh, that will allow you to navigate around your system or any system that you may happen to be on. So it shows the initial star at the center of the system. Here it's Ascalon, the main sequence star. And if we double click on that, it'll bring it up and it'll pop it up right here in our central view. If you ever kind of lose it, you can always double click here and it'll also pop you right here on this star. But let's say we wanted to go to Ascalon 1. Ascalon 1, and it puts this nice little pointer out here is a volcanic planet. It's the first planet around our big star Ascalon. It is unexplored. It's a volcanic planet and it's 5,000 uh, miles in diameter. Okay, I, is that miles or kilometers? I don't remember and I don't honestly think it matters. Uh, let's call it 5,000 miles. I, I'm an Englishman. Well, I'm an American. Close enough. So we're going to go with miles. Um, the English don't even use uh, miles anymore, for gosh sakes. Uh, so anyway, you can look at that and you may say, why is it even showing me that? Well, it's because this could have an effect on how col colonizable something is, how many resources it has, etc. So it can become important. Um, Ascalon 2, you can see it's way off in the distance there in space. It points the line to it and when we come over here that's a carbonaceous planet and if you don't know what the heck that is you can always go up to galactopedia look at planet types and it'll tell you what carbonation is uh, quality percentage diameter has it been explored what resources it has you can find it all here but this is a very easy way to get around your system including your home world and you can see that because our flag is there so trawaz is right here it's a beautiful planet look at that deep ocean moon i say planet i gotta stop doing that i did this during our uh preview gameplay this is a moon it is not a planet okay uh, we see this exploration of two. That means we've just started exploring our own planet. Uh, when it has been explored, this will go green. That does not necessarily mean it. Uh, you can't find something there later. Okay, so you know that that just tells you with what sensors you have at that very moment, you've fully explored it. If you get better sensors later, it's possible you miss something. Okay, now you may think, well, this is our home planet. We're probably going to figure that one out pretty well. That is true. But if you get out into other systems, it turns green. You may go back there later with better sensors and say, hey, we missed a resource or something. What kind of moon is it? Deep ocean. It's 5,000 miles across. Um, 
Then you have 54%. This is its suitability to be colonized. 54% okay. It's not great. Uh, two and a half stars. It kind of rates it on a star system. Uh, wow, it was like restaurants out here. Two billion people, 200 million. It's Actarian. Are the people happy? How much culture do we have there? What resources we have? And how much defense do we have on this moon? But again, we'll get into all of that as we go. But here is the system uh, help. And I really like this. It also, you can go to any ship in the system here and so these are all kind of civilian type ships right uh the spaceport's not but well they're non-militaristic ships how about that i'll put it that way these are here as you get military ships they will be designated with triangles and we will look at that as we go along you can see here is our spaceport and you always start with the spaceport and that we'll we'll talk about it as we get going you can see we've already got ships out here we have the weary peril okay that's a, a navigation ship so it's a scouting ship you can see it's under construction 32 percent so we just start with this stuff right uh space dock here and then we have a mining ship there we can hold the center key down and go around our planet whoa that got psychedelic uh indeed but we start off with the three basic ship types and a spaceport okay um down here just different overlays you can put on the map resource flows migration flows tourism flows nebula boundaries on and off now we talked slightly about this when we uh, set up our game, but there are nebulas out here that will keep you from moving through them And they could be colored orange purple green or yellow depending on what they are Let's click that on and scoot back. We could even go to the galaxy view up oh, not not from there Let's go out to the galaxy view and you can see where they are here, right? Um, this is it's not identifying exactly what they are yet, is it? No, I don't think so. It's a little bit of fog of war, right? But it's telling you something is there. And so this is just going to set up roadblocks. But we're a long ways away from that. You can also uh, long range scanners on and off, tr uh, ship travel vectors. Sometimes I like to have those on, selected ship only, so it'll tell us where that is vectoring to. Location badges, I want that on. Exploration, um, yeah, we want that on. Certainly we want that on. Diplomacy relations, we'll see. Um, you can display ship and base symbols. You can display weapon ranges, zoom in, zoom out. You can also change your view here. Right now we're at the default, which is kind of at a 45 degree angle down, but you could go top down. If you like to play this way a little bit better, uh, you could even go high angle. Wow, look at this. Low angle. I don't think I've ever played those way. I always play the default way. I think I'm just used to it. Now down here, you can see when we're at the galaxy view, you can go right here and go straight back to Troas, our home. So down here, you're always going to be able to find your way. If not, just start scooting back really fast with the center mouse button. Okay, uh, well, let's talk about automation. Um, this is arguably the most important part of the game. And if we go up to the top left here, uh, remember when I showed you this the first time, it just had this little bit that showed you the act supremacy like that. If we click on it and actually really select it, you get a lot more down here. It's our economy. You can see here economy F2 is the hotkey, funding levels, maintenance, government, leader, and finally policy settings. And this is what I want to go to first because we're going to set our policies of what is under directly under our control and what is under control of the AI. And so let's go here, advisors and automation. Preset configuration, default. Okay, we'll probably make one up that's called the Axe Supremacy one. And colonization, automate colonization of new worlds or control this manually. Well, we could automate it, so the AI does that. Suggest and execute. Okay, so I'm gonna just talk about this in the first one here. Suggest and execute means your advisors give you a suggestion. 
and unless you say no, they'll do what they think is best, all right? Then we have just to suggest. Advisors will make suggestions that will not implement them unless you approve them, okay? This is the level I like to play on. I like the advisor saying, hey, you know what? You haven't built a research lab in a while. Maybe we should do that. And then if I say yes, then we'll do it, right? Instead of them saying that, and unless I say no, it just happens. Manual, once you get to a big enough size, there's just no way you can keep up with everything. So I like to have the advisors still on here um, just to suggest us things. Colony population policy, okay? Population policy controls which alien races are allowed to migrate to our colonies. Note that each individual colony can also toggle control of population policy from automated to manual. Okay, so every single colony in the game, we can talk about population controls of who can migrate to our planets. I'm going to have that on manual. Um, colony facilities, automated, suggest and execute, suggest. Okay, so everywhere we go down, I'm going to try to have suggest where I can. Tax rates, though, manual. Colony stock levels, um, this one's a tough one because this can get really into micromanagement. I may actually leave this automated for now and we'll come back to it. As a matter of fact, colony tax rates I'll, automatic, I'll automate at the start because we can change them later, later. And along with funding levels, we'll change those later, but we'll get off to a start with them automated. Research, manual. I mean, we obviously want to control that manually. Crash research manual, ship and base design. For now, we're going to have that be on automated. Character locations manual, intelligence missions manual. All of these then are on suggest. That's what we want. Troop recruitment for now, because troop recruitment really goes into things you're going to be doing later when you're invading planets and whatnot. Um, we're going to put that on automated, are we? Are we? Yeah, let's put that on automated. But let's put fleet formation, fleet postures, fleet ship man management, all on manual. Exploration. Okay, so you can see we just went through one there. But this is important to go to your policy settings and decide what do I want to control? What do I want the AI to control? Send survey team when hide hidden items present or colonizable or populated. Yes, I mean, we want that, right? What are our other choices? Never. Uh, hidden items present. Always. Not always. So we want that. Investigate ruins when prompt. Well, they will prompt us whether we want to or not. So it's like manual. It's like being suggested. Investigate abandoned ships when prompt. Okay? Colonization. Colonization suggest. Minimum suitability, 20%. I would uh, advise to keep it this way. You do not, especially very early in the game, want to be colonizing planets that aren't very suitable for it. So you want to find, you know, you want to get colonies out there, but you don't want them to be crappy colonies. Independent colonization, minimum success. OK, so this is those independent tribes of people or independent races of people out there. The game is asking you, what is your percent chance of colonizing their planet or moon that you're willing to say, OK, let's do it? Well, we're saying it's got to at least be 80 percent. We'll keep it that way. Colonies and tax rates. Colony tax rates, we just talked about that. Stock levels at colonies, we talked about that as well, sort of. Uh, this is for resources. We're going to allow the game to control this at the start because really there's not, uh, you know, it's a lot of micromanagement for not much payoff. Uh, later on, we may change that. Colony population policies, we'll have that manual. Planetary facility building, suggest funding levels, automated for now. Um, target approval for small colonies, 40, for medium, 10, 5, for large. Okay, well, we're just going to leave that alone for now. Construction, ship base design, we're going to leave that automated. Then we go suggest, down all these things. Um, prioritize state ships in the construction queues. Now, I've talked about the fact that... Um, 
you know, you will be building civilian ships for, civi you know, civilians in your empire. What this is saying is if we want to build something for the military, let's say, or even a, uh, so a construction ship, which is one of our ships, that will get priority over the civilian ships, okay? Prioritize state ships in docking queues when they come into the space forts. Prioritize new military ships are automated. Ooh, yeah, uh, no. Manually control. New other state ships are automated. No, manually control. Population to build a large space port, a medium space port, a small. This kind of stuff, just leave it default. Right now, we can only build a small spaceport because we have 2 billion people. That's over 1.2 billion. Um, we'll need to get to 10 billion to build a medium spaceport, but you don't really need a medium spaceport, right? Unless you have that many people. So let's just keep that the same. Um, all of this normal escort build ratio you're telling the ai which proportion of ships to build as it is now escorts would be 18 percent frigates 24 percent destroyers 20 we'll get into all of that later build independent ships yes uh, civilian ships repair independent ships yes because we'll make money off that diplomacy they're going to prompt us for everything diplomacy military attacks they will suggest we will have to approve attack overmatch factor. This is just telling it automatically attack if it's over, you know, 1.5 to 1. Okay, they're still going to prompt us though. Capture conditions for uh, ships when high tech are larger than we can build. We'll want to capture the ship if we can. You can go through all this. We'll keep it all default. Okay, um, upgrade enlisted military ships. We will want to do that. Mm, let's go ahead and turn that to yes because I want all of our military ships to upgrade uh, automatically refuel, automatically repair, automatically retrofit so on and so forth now usually we're going to want an automatic retrofit that's when we research something that's better we want it to come in and automatically get upgraded right? and really automatically repair manual ships probably want to do that too because we want them to repair and refuel so let's do that uh fleets yeah actually i want all of these to be yeah. yes when it comes to the military i would rather they just automatically come in to refuel and if we don't want them to do that we can tell them not to um escort ratios we'll talk more about that military troop recruitment I'm going to keep that automated. Garrison level in your colonies, normal. Now, if you're afraid you're going to get attacked, you could go to very high or high, but not early. Fleets, fleet formation. I'm saying we're going to do all of this, and we'll talk a lot about it. Research, we're going to manually control research and crash research, which we'll talk about. And intelligence missions, finally. Uh, we're going to manually control those and counterintelligence ratio. We'll talk more about that when we start sending our spies out. So again, that's policy settings. And every one of these buttons up here is going to have this kind of setup where you have the initial button. And when you just hover over it, it'll show you kind of the big picture kind of stuff. But then if you click on it, it goes down and you have a secondary set of buttons underneath it. State economy, funding levels, etc. Uh, diplomacy works the same way. Diplomatic relations, pirates, independent colonies, ambassadors, spies, and prisoners. Characters, characters, spies, prisoners, uh, colonies. Again, you know, everyone here has this multiple secondary buttons. So just keep that in mind when you click on any of those. I say we go ahead and play the game. Uh, the main thing I wanted to do is just show you those preferences because you can control down to the dotted I and cross T every single thing in your empire or you can turn it over to the computer and you can always change that, right? So if there are certain things happening in the game you don't like, if you don't like certain things the AI has decided to do, you can always change that and just you know go in it's here it's underneath your empire and your empire's policy settings okay uh very important
Okay, so we're about to get going here. The first thing that's happened, of course, is you have a new leader. And when I clicked on that, it brought up the characters tab. We could also read the message. A new leader named Vasarafu has been created. So there's leader Vasarafu. When I clicked on this, and he is automated as of right now. Now we could dismiss him. We could get rid of him if we don't like him for whatever reason, and he would be replaced. Uh, automated. Click to control manually. Let's do that. Let's control our leader manually, okay? And everything in this game kind of operates that way. There will be a button that will show automated, and if you don't like that and you want to control it, it can go manual. Okay, what is he doing? He's waiting at Trawas. Why is he waiting? Well, it's the only place we've got. So, I mean, you can send him to other colonies later if you think that that would be beneficial for some reason. But 99% of the time, you're going to keep him at your kind of capital moon or planet. And that's what we're going to do here with Vos Serifu. You then, he has skills, but those skills are really based on his traits. And the same goes with every other character in this game. They have traits. In this case, he's sober. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad he doesn't drink. He doesn't look like a big drinker to me. Plus five colony cor corruption reduction. That's good, but he's negative 5% diplomacy. I guess he won't take people out to the bars and lubricate them up a bit, all right? So these traits, he will gain them more and more. It's not like this is stuck in stone here. He will gain more traits as time goes on, which then could potentially give you skills, all right? He does have some skills. He's good at high-tech research or uh, facilitating it. So we get a plus 2% in high-tech research. We get a plus 5% in industrial research. We get a plus 5% in colony corruption reduction which is good because corruption can really start to hurt your colonies. And, but he's negative five at diplomacy. So we know where we, he got the bottom two here from trait, right? These are just skills he has. These will build towards 100 and he will go up skill levels. And so as, you know, this gets nearer and nearer to 100, when it clicks over, he may, this may go up to plus 3%. It may not, you know, I mean, he he's building skills through progress here. Location, Trawas. Well, if we look, there's no other place to put him, all right? And we wouldn't want to anyway. But if there was, you could just transfer to a new location. And then this tells all the events about this character. So we now have one character in this game, Boss Serifu. Okay. So they will click off that, get off Vos Serifu. You can then dismiss this or right click it, get rid of it. Uh, we'll get off of our message log. We'll slow this down. Now we could go all the way to 0.25. That may be a little slow, even for me, uh, but we'll see. Now then, let's get down here and look at our spaceport. Okay, there's, the, there's our spaceport. Uh, that's what you need to know. No, there's more to it than that. Um, let's look at our home moon, then our spaceport. Let's turn our badges on. There we go. So now we can very, now you always want to have that on and the weapon ranges. I feel like we don't have much with weapons now, but we'll turn those on so you can see the weapon ranges. But if you look here, you're going to see different ship types. And so the first one we see is the Wild Courage. It is a mining ship. So we start with four things. We have a mining ship. Okay. We have a space dock. I think this is our construction ship. And then we have the Navigator, which is our scout ship. So this are, you know, kind of the three main functions you have at the start of the game. Then you have the spaceport. Okay. Is the spaceport... Uh, this is not online yet, so we're going to have to repair the spaceport, and that's usually done with the construction ship. Uh, we'll get to that. They have to be built first, so let's go ahead and hit play, and off we go. Let's see how slow 0 0.25 is. Uh, well, we haven't moved today yet. Uh, we'll see what I think I may go up to one on that. That seems entirely too slow. In the ancient Agdarian undersea city ruins, we have made a curious discovery. 
The great ocean of stars awaits us. What or who will we find there? In centuries past, our ancestors built the great undersea ruins that still reveal their secrets to us today. Their works were for many generations beyond us. Okay, the technology of our ancestors has shown us how to travel faster than light itself, but their ruins also tell of a terrible and sudden apocalypse whose cause we do not yet understand. We must not let this deter us. Our understanding of science has allowed us to glimpse a greater destiny that waits for us beyond our world. Let us complete the work they set before us, so on and so forth. Um, we have found technology that has advanced our understanding of early warp field experiments. Okay, so when we found these old ruins of ours, we got a plus 50 here, right? Before it said it was going to take over six years to research the skip drive. Now it's saying 3.41 and we're 50% of the way there. Uh, we have found technology that has advanced our understanding of research labs as well. That's great. These ruins provide the following colony bonuses. Plus 6% colony development, plus 9% colony ship construction speed, five, plus 5% reactor research, and plus 7% scenery. So scenery is very important when it comes to tourism, okay? Colony development, that is our own development. And if we click on our colony here, this is development. So this is Trawaz, our home moon. And, you know, we've got some exploration level two, quality and diameter. The next thing down here is development. And development is kind of everything to a colony. You want this development to go up as high as you can get it, as fast as you can get it, because that allows you to do other things. And so right now it's at 56%. That's not particularly great, but you can see what it's from. 39% is from our population of 2 billion, just gives it a development level of 39%. Then we get plus 6% from other items. What are those other items? Well, we just read about it. It's these underground ruins or underwater ruins that we found. That gives us a 6% and 11% from resources, okay? The most important thing for colony development is going and finding luxury items. When you find luxury items out and about in the stars, you send them to your home world, that makes these people very cultured. And so your uh, colony develops. And as we go along here, as we find these things, our colony will start to get better and better, which will help us in many ways, tax revenues and otherwise. Okay, uh, dismiss, take me to the location of the ancient Agdarian undersea ruins. Well, it's here. It's it was. Okay, so that is the first notification we've gotten, and we're still moving. So we clicked off that. Always be careful. When you click off things, the game will start moving. And I can already tell we're going to go a little faster. Let's go to 0 0.5. Starship construction. We have constructed our first starship, the Weary Peril. This event marks the beginning of our return to the stars. We must continue to expand and explore our solar system. Build more ships to establish thriving solar empire. Take me to the location. Well, there it is. And we get down here into the Weary Pearl and we'll click on it. And over here, you'll see the Weary Pearl is our ship. Move to the ancient Agdarian spaceport. It came out automated because that's what we selected before. We want these to be automated when they're first built because generally what they'll do is go fill up or go do something else, you know, move into their fleet uh, if it's a military ship or, or otherwise. So anyway, we've now got the Wary per Peril. It is a scout ship. Um, it's got weapons. You can see here it's got plasma torpedoes. It's got a strength of 11. You can just kind of look at this and get an eyeball test of what you're up against if you're fighting something or the strength of your own ships. Uh, this has got different weapons, different range. It's also got a hull. You see here is the hull. And then outside of that would be the shields. But we don't have any shields yet, so that's a zero. We, haven't, we just haven't even researched them. So it's got a whole integrity of 100%. Now, later on when you have shields, when something fires at you, it will bust into your shields first. That will go from 100% to zero, let's say. When it gets to zero, then it'll start degrading your hull, right? So that's the advantages of shields. It takes a certain amount of fuel, a certain amount of energy to run this ship. 
Now down here you can see refuel and repair at Trawaz, which is our home moon. We could retrofit it, but it's disabled because we've already got the latest design. We could stop whatever it's doing. We could retire to Trawaz. We could fully automate this ship, which we have right now, and we could set its tactics, okay? So you can do a lot of things with one ship, right? It's a beautiful ship. Nice, nice, nice looking ship there. Um, let's go to its tactics. Roll within the fleet. Attack. Do not engage. I mean, this is a scout ship, right? And so this kind of doesn't matter what you pick. It's not really a military craft. Uh, engagement range, do not engage. Now, this is important, though, because what do you want it to do if it gets in a battle? Run, run, evade. <laughs> so you always want it evading. Now, with your other types of ships, we can go aggressive, neutral, cautious, etc. cetera. Uh, but we, for a scout ship, all evade. Retreat when attacked. Invade colonies, never. That all makes sense. So for every ship that you uh, build or is built, you can set its tactics here. And we'll do more of that with the other military ships. Take me to the location. Now, this is our first scout ship. What's interesting about this is it's going to move incredibly slowly, right? When we get this warp drive, it'll be able to go boop, boop boop all over the map but right now it's going to go really damn slowly but that's okay uh let's dismiss that unknown items detected we already talked about that right those were uh the ancient ruins so we can uh, dismiss that and we'll dismiss the scout ship we'll pause it is now january 11th we moved a whole six days almost a week wow look at us go okay so i'm ex i'm selected on the weary per uh, peril over here it's coming over to the spaceport because that's just naturally what it would do but i want it to go to our big uh moo or i'm sorry our big planet out here Ascalon 5 the big gas giant Ascalon 5 and so i right clicked on that with this selected and now it says down here survey Ascalon 5 Okay, so our scout ships have probes and sensors on them. They'll, they will, you know, probe and sensor this thing. Now, as it goes on, as the game goes on, we'll research better probes and sensors that have a longer range, that pick up more things, etc. But for now, we got to go with the stock. That's all we got. So let's go ahead and get that moving. How's this? Let's let's check this out. How fast is this going? Uh okay okay we're gonna play at this speed 0 0.5 then so our scout ships out and going and you may say well what about our, our other ships it's a great question we've got the sneaky renegade here it's under construction it's at five percent so it's being constructed from the planet so if we get down here it's actually quite cool you can see this has nothing you know you can see the parts coming onto the ship and you can see probes coming from our moon out here to build it and so now we're up to eight percent right so it's going to take a little bit of time and that's what happens when you start pre-warp uh we also then have a cargo shuttle that our civilians want built and then another cargo sh shuttle that our civilians want built the construction ships are our ships, right? Those are capital ships. They will be used to construct other things. And again, you can see all of these, you can see the probes moving out to it to build it. And that's now up to 10%. The other thing we have here is the Wild Courage, which is a mining ship, okay? Let's, pa let's pause. Um, oh, the game already paused us once we got to January 27th. Ancient Spaceport. Our scientists were long puzzled by a strange star that appeared to meander across our skies. Now we have discovered this star to be a severely damaged spaceport orbiting our homeworld. Surely it was built by our ancestors before the Great Cataclysm, which is believed to have devastated the galaxy. Okay. 
Um, long we've prided ourselves on our ability to design machines that are both efficient and beautiful, now we have the opportunity to discover the engineering and artistic values of our ancestors. In recent years, we have made great technological strides of our own, but surely there is much to be learned from our forebears. Should we rebuild this spaceport or scrap it for resources? Always rebuild it, okay? Always rebuild it. So take me to the location. There it is. It's kind of a hulk. Uh, you know, there's just a hulk in space here. Rebuild that. Now you have a spaceport. So that just automatically gives you a spaceport, <coughs> excuse me, at the start. Uh, and you need one. You need one. So rebuild that. I mean, it would help us with research bonuses if we tore this thing apart. But I, I find in the early game, you want to get your spaceport going. Okay, I'm not going to read through every single thing here. I like to do it right at the start. So you get kind of a flavor of the game, how it sounds, what you know the script is like. Uh, but, you know, I'll allow you to kind of look through this on your own. Um, I will say this, workers have managed to retrieve interesting data from the logs when they were rebuilding it. Um, they used an unfamiliar dating system, thousands of years. A small crew was left on the base, but they're dead. Um, in stasis pods, they are a sad reminder of all that's been lost. Okay, uh, let's dismiss. And we're going to pause this here on January 28th because we have our first recommendation. And our advisors now are saying we should build another exploration ship. Okay, first of all, let's go up to exploration. You see here, fully explored systems, zero. Partially explored systems, one. Unknown systems, 706. So we said we wanted 700. Eh, it gave us 707. That's fine. Now you can see here a tour is available. And that is one of the great things about this game is the tours. The tours will really teach you how to play the game. But before we do that, uh, we're going to go through it. Let's just look at exploration. We have exploration ships. Well, we have the Wary Peril here. It's sent, been sent to survey Askelon 5. We've got it on manual. Great. Known ruins. Ancient Agdarian undersea city ruins. And you can see the various bonuses that is giving us. You can also see what they look like there. And if you look at our colony, this icon will be there showing you that we have ruins. Um, abandoned ships and bases special locations we don't have any of those so that's it i mean that's exploration i mean most of the time you're going to be looking where are my exploration ships and we can click on the weary peril i can double click on it we can see how far it's gotten around here well it hasn't gotten very far that is for sure and the game's telling us we need a second one i agree with that right i mean we want to get out and explore it's a really important part of this game um Okay, let's go through the tour of exploration because exploration is going to mean so much. Exploration involves sending out exploration ships to visit unknown worlds, revealing their resources, colonization suitability, and any special bonuses. They may also encounter ancient ruins or abandoned ships or bases that can be investigated. Locations can be explored to varying levels. Initial exploration reveals more obvious data like the quality of the planet or surface surface level resources, but other items can be hidden at deeper levels of exploration. Um, this can include bonuses, ancient ruins, resources, or even some artifacts, okay? Uh, exploring at a deeper level requires better components. At each location, the exploration ship sends out survey teams to inspect the planet. It's slow and time consuming. Higher tech levels unlock exploration scanner components that allow faster exploration. You have the exploration ship list we just talked about. Map overlay, when the exploration ships list is open, the exploration galaxy map overlay is auto enabled and you see it right here, right? So when we're on exploration, this map overlay automatically pops on. And what does that show us? Well, where have we explored? And you can see this is in yellow, so we've just started exploring our home system of Ascalon. Okay, so that'll turn on. And then if we go to next, known ruins, this will show you a list of all the ruins that we know. Imagine that. 
um, and it shows you any relevant bonuses. Next, abandoned ships and bases. Anything that we've seen there when zoomed out at the galaxy or system level, the abandoned ship or base locations are highlighted on the map when you're on this. So anytime you're on one of these buttons, it shows you that stuff on the map. So right now we're at exploration, right? We have not explored this planet, Okran, or that's Escalon 4. There's a moon called Okran around it. This is Ascalon 2, and it says unexplored. Here, this is our home, Ascalon 5. We've just started exploring it, so it's in yellow. So while we're on exploration, on the map, it shows you the information you know that you're talking about, right? Okay. And then finally, special locations. This screen lists all the known special locations uh, when zoomed out. Uh, it can reveal unusual locations. These may include fields of ship debris from ancient battles or other even stranger phenomenon. So that's exploration, and that's what we're going to be doing when we come back next time. We're going to build a second exploration ship. We should start to get closer to getting our warp, which will allow us to get out of our own system. Uh, for now, we've got enough juice. We can get around. We could. Well, can we get all the way to our star? Maybe not. This shows you how far your ship that you're selected on can go uh, with one jump and total eventually. Uh, right now, we don't even have jumps. So this is just how far out it can go in yellow. We can only get to Escalon 4 and no further. So we can look at Escalon 5, that moon, and Escalon 4 and its moon. But that's all the further we can get. So we've got to get those warp drives, right? That's all exploration, and we'll do more of that next time. We'll also go into our colony, talk about tax rates and our economy. You can see we're now plus 226. I didn't do anything. Some of it's automated, and it's popped us up to a tax rate that gets us just positive. But we'll talk more about that when we come back for episode three. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully this is very helpful to you. You're having a good time. I know I am. I couldn't wait for this game to come out. I'm really excited to play it, even if I'm talking while doing it. So until next time, Strategy Gaming Dojo, I'll see you then.